today we're doing 6-6, six, six. you're doing page 6, I mean 282, number 1 through 27 odd. Um, to start, you don't need to write this page of notes. Um, just listen for a minute, okay, and watch. So when I have something like X, AX plus 3X, um, how would I factor that? Okay, we're going to factor out the greatest monomial factor of x, and what would be left? x times the quantity of a plus 3. Okay? If what I factored out there was a monomial, one term, right? Today what we're going to be factoring out is, does everybody understand that that's a binomial factor and the other one's a uh, one's a monomial factor, the other is a binomial factor, right? Binomial means two terms. So when given something like this, what can I factor out? A ton? Y plus 5. This is a binomial factor. If I factor out a Y plus 5 out of both terms, right, what's left? Right, what's left is the A plus B. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's try it again. Um, y plus 5 was a binomial factor, and the other factor is also a binomial factor. Okay. So we use factor by grouping when we have more than three terms, generally five terms, or even amount of terms, right? So, um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to group them. Right, whoops, let me show you here. I'm going to draw parentheses, right? And notice, this 3 owns that plus sign, so I'm including it there. Now, what can I factor out of the first binomial? Go, Brienne. A, and what would be left, Nicole? M. Good. What can I factor out of the second one, Jamie? Three. What kind of three? Positive. Positive three. And what's left? Uh, three times the quantity of M plus four. M plus four is left. Right? Now, what do we have in common? a binomial factor of m plus 4, if I factor it out, what are we left with? What's left, Nicole? I factored that out. Yep, a plus 3, the remainder goes into the other binomial. Does that make sense? Okay, questions? Can I continue? Okay. So what can we factor out of the first one? Uh, let me hear from somebody else. Max. The binomial factor, y plus 3. And when I do that, what's left, Nicole? X plus K. Good. Number two, what can we factor out? Actually, why don't you try n number two? Pause the recording and do number... Try number two and three. Go. All right, so what do I do for the next one, Chloe? Um, you would factor out the X plus two. Good, and what's left? Uh, X squared plus three. 
Perfect. Next one, number three. Uh, how about Elise? I got T the quantity of T minus four times the quantity of five minus X. Good. Okay, so what do we get? Uh, sorry, the next one. Oh, my gosh. Okay, what's different here on number four is we have to write the, we have to group them. Okay, you're writing this down. Okay, now, uh, Gracie, what can I do out of the first one? Okay, you could do, okay, so for number, wait, yeah, okay, number four, if you're going to group them together like that, you could, actually, I don't know. Okay, go, Grant. Well, for the first one, you could group out. What can I factor out? A. A, and what's left? So it would be P minus P minus 3. And out of the second one, Grant? You can group out B. We can factor a yeah. B. And what's left? Quantity of P minus 3. P minus 3. And so what could I factor now? Uh, P minus 3. The binomial factor of P minus 3, right? Mm -hmm. Times the quantity of... Hold on. P minus 3. Do you see that, Gracie? Oh, yeah. And then what's left, Gracie? Um, a plus B. Good. You got that? Okay, pause the recording, and I want you to do number five. Go. Okay, so you group AB minus A, mm -hmm. positive B, C minus C. Okay, and what do I factor out? Factor A, and what's left? B minus 1. B minus 1, good. Yeah. And okay, and what will I... You factor out negative C. No, not negative C. How about a positive C? Oh, positive C. B minus 1. If you pull out a, a, a negative C, then your binomials are not matching. So what, what Nicole just said to me is she wanted to, let me, let me I did, switch. I did a negative C times the quantity of negative B plus 1. Right. If you factor out a negative C, then B, C, it becomes... By negative C, then it becomes, what'd you get? It becomes uh, negative, negative B negative plus, one. plus one. Is this matching? You can't leave it like that. The only way we can factor out that, that common binomial, here, I'm putting, I'm doing it in the wrong color. That common binomial is if they're exactly the same. Right? Okay, so that doesn't work. So what do I factor out instead? There's no B in both terms. Positive C. Positive C. And what's left? Sorry. B minus C. Okay. B minus 1. Do you understand? When I pull out the positive C, I'm left with B. So now what can we do? And now it's B minus 1. Good. Times the quantity of A plus C. Okay, questions? So now, sometimes the terms are not in order. Okay? So let's say I try and factor 3X and I take out an X and then I'm left with... 3 plus A, what happens next? What can I factor out? Right? Because my goal is to get two common binomials out. Right? Mm -hmm. That doesn't work here. So we can reorder them. You got to just kind of turn them around a little. Okay, reorder the terms. Now we're going to group X squared and 3X. And I can factor out X plus 3. And when I group the next group, right, um, I'm going to pull out, what can we pull out? A, a positive A. And what's left? Good. Much better. 
And now, what's the final answer? X plus 3 times the quantity of X plus A. You got it? Okay. Okay, so you guys try the next two. I want you to pause the recording and finish one and two. All right, let's check our work on number one. Let's go with Julia. What am I grouping? Um, the Good, the positive. I always include that sign, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what can I group out of? What can I factor out of the first one, Julia? I can? Or no. no. That doesn't work, does it? There's no common factor. So you have to read, um... Right. What do you want to put with NX? You got to regroup them. So what do you want to put? How do you want to move them? Put it. Just try. NX goes with what? Okay, let's try that. NX, she said. Go, oops, that's not an M. So NX plus 3N and um, let's go with plus, notice I have the X term first, so what am I going to write? What left over? I've used this, I've used this. What else? Six and 2x. Right. But I want to write my x term first, right? Two x plus, six. plus 6. And now I can try and group those. Let's see. So I'm going to group this, and what are we left? Uh, uh, what can I factor out? Um, and what's left? X plus 3. Good. And what can we factor out of the second group? Positive 2. And what's left? Plus three. Good. And then we can factor out what? X plus three. The, quant the binomial factor of x plus 3. And what's left? N or two n. No, n, n plus, two. plus 2. Good. Okay, questions? Did you do it differently? Um, yeah, I did it the opposite way. She, how did you regroup it? So I put it as um, 3n plus x times... 3n plus... <coughs> oh, 6, sorry. Plus 6. Times the quantity of nx... No, plus... Plus, oh, plus nx plus 2x. Okay, and then you grouped from there. And let's see. Does it matter? I mean, it, it's the same group. I mean, it's the same polynomial, so the answer should be the same. And so when I factor out a 3, I'm left with n, n, I'm left with n plus 2. When I factor out a plus x, I'm left with an n plus 2. Notice you're left with the opposite. Binomial, right? So it doesn't matter. You will get the same answer. So then I'm pulling out my binomial factor, this time of n plus 2, and what's left is 3 plus x. Yes? Is it interchangeable like that with every problem? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So number 2, I'm just going to do it quickly. Um, your final answer should have been um, x plus 2 x squared plus 2 times the quantity of x minus 5. Okay, yes? Does it matter what order the no. factors in? No. Nope. No, nope. no, nope. not at all. You could have done it so that you were getting x, the, factoring out the binomial factor of x minus 5 and then multiplied it by. Does it matter if I do 2 times 3 or 3 times 2? Mm -hmm. No. Commutative property says when you're multiplying quantities... These just happen to be binomials. Okay, so now let's uh, make it a little more difficult. And see, it just all depends on how you ordered it, Noah. We will have no way of knowing 
if you're ordering it the same way as Gracie, the same way as Nicole, as Brianna. Does that make sense? Okay, so we're going to make, um, let's go into a little bit of opposite factors. So what's the opposite of x? Negative x. What's the opposite of 8? Good. If I have a binomial and I take the opposite, isn't it negative x times negative, negative x minus 3? Mm -hmm. You with me? Mm -hmm. Okay. If I have a minus b and I take the opposite, right, negative times the quantity of negative a minus b, doesn't that work out to be negative a plus b? And if I flip that around, isn't it this? Negative A plus B, isn't it B minus A? Mm -hmm. You understand, Nicole? So if I distribute, I'm getting negative A plus B. And then I just flip it around, put the B here and the A here with its negative sign. You with me? Mm -hmm. you always have to keep doing it. Well, yeah. We want it to be, I want to see. So what happens if I have C minus 5? What would the opposite be? What is it? Give me the end result without doing all that. Look at the pattern. No. Go, Brianna. 5 minus C. 5 minus C. The opposite would be 5 minus C. Does that make sense? I'm looking for this end result. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay, so the opposite of 5y squared, Nicole, minus 4 would be? 4 minus 5y squared. Perfect. What I'm doing is just multiplying by a negative 1 or factoring out a negative 1. Does that make sense? Um, the opposite of 2n minus 3, Maddie? No, just like we've been doing. Positive 3 minus 2. Good. And now, we're rewriting each factor as a product of negative 1 and its opposite. So negative 1 times what equals negative x? What is the opposite? Oh, Right, because they want us to rewrite it as a factor of negative 1 times its opposite, x, right? Okay, so what would number 2 be? Negative 1 times? Good. What would number 3 be? Negative 1 times the quantity of a plus 5. Good. N number 4? <laughs> negative 1 times what? Negative quantity of negative x plus 4, or 4 minus x. 4 minus x. Negative 1 times 4 minus x. So if I want to flip a binomial around, all I have to do is multiply it by a negative 1, right? Mm -hmm. How would I flip the binomial around? Negative 1 times what for number 5? Good. Negative 1 times 7 minus x squared. Negative 1 times p minus 2. Negative 1 times 5k squared minus 6. So now we're going to use that. Okay. So I'm going to group the first two. Okay. What can we factor out? An x. And what's left? P minus 9. Okay. What can we factor out of the next one? A 2, a plus 2, and what's left? 9 minus b. Do you see how it's opposite? So what would I need to do, factor out of 18 minus 2b, to make that flip around? What? Right, so negative 1 times 2 is negative 2, right? So instead of doing positive 2, we're going to do negative 2, and then... Look what happens. When I factor it by a negative, 18 divided by negative 2 is what? Negative 9. Negative 9 and negative 2b divided by negative 2 is? B. Positive b. Right? 
And so now I have that common binomial factor that I can factor out, which is a b minus 9 times the quantity of x minus 2. You want to pause? Yes? Why wouldn't it just be negative 9 plus b? Well, we just want, we want to factor, map. we can only factor if they're matching. So we want them to match. We're, we're trying to manipulate so you get them to match. Common factor, okay? We don't want to write it differently. We want to write it the same, even though that's of the same value. Okay, let's try it again. What am I going to do? I'm going to group the first two, right? And what do I get out of the first one when I factor it? Jamie? I'm going to factor out a k, and what's left? x squared minus 5. Good. Okay. What am I going to factor out, Nicole? A negative 3. A negative 3. And then what is left, Nicole? x squared minus 16. B minus? Oh, plus 5. Minus 5. Minus 5. Good. Now I can factor out that binomial square, I mean that, that binomial factor, x squared minus 5, and what's left is k minus 3. Okay, questions? Okay, number 3. Number 3. Why don't you do 3 and 4? Pause the recording and do number 3 and 4. Let's check our work. On number three, you should have had a minus four times the quantity of n minus one. Did you guys get that? Okay. On the next one, you should have had y squared minus three times the quantity of x squared minus seven. Okay, now let's do some um, at putting it all together. Look at the sign. Step one, what do we do? Great, which is two. I'm going to factor out a two, okay? And now I'm going to factor by grouping. You should write while we're going. So I'm going to group the first two, group the second two. And now... What can we factor out of the first group? P. A P. And what's left? X plus four. I don't want to forget that. Okay. And then what can I factor out of the second group? Three. Plus three. And then I'm left with X plus four. And so we are left with the quantity of x plus 4 times p plus 3, and don't forget your GCF. Does that make sense? Right? I guess they, the difference is, is they don't group it right there. Factor by grouping. So the difference in my PowerPoint is they don't group it like this right here. Okay, questions. So do not forget that GCF. You have to include that in your answer. So by rights, when I multiply, by rights, when I multiply these two, it should equal this. And when I multiply that times the two, I should get what I start with. But you never want to just give me what you started with. Does that make sense? That would be wrong. All right, let's try one more. Okay, factor completely. What are we going to pull out? Uh, there's no GCF. But we can pull a Y squared out of the first one, and we can pull a 9 out of the second. Right? If I group them. And actually, I want to pull a what? Negative nine. A negative 9. Because once I pull a plus 9, 
I'm realizing I'm left with 1 minus x squared. So I want it to match. Yes? So for every problem, we have to do, like, x is now, or, like, negative 9? Well, in this case, because I'm noticing it's coming out opposite, when I factored out a 9, when I factored out a plus 9, what's left? 1 minus x squared. That's the opposite. Do you understand? So whenever it's opposite, then, you have then you're going to switch it to instead, I want to flip that around and factor out a negative 9, and then I'm going to be left with positive x squared minus 1. Right? Negative 9 divided by 9 is a negative 1. Negative 9 divided by negative 9x squared is a positive x squared. Now I have a common binomial factor. Does that make sense? I have a common binomial factor. Well, they did it like this, and then they rewrite it a second time. Just so you have it for your notes if you want to do that. Okay, to flip it around. Now we can factor out an x squared minus 1, and what's left is y squared minus 9. Are we done? The first one, what is it? What's it called? It's the difference of squares. Yep. The second one, what is it? They both break down to x plus 1, x minus 1, times the quantity of x plus 3, x minus 3. Does that make sense? So this becomes our difference of squares, and now we are done. Can I? Yep. Yeah, that's the problem on the quiz that people weren't doing. People were leaving me with things like this, and it's not factored completely. Do you understand? You need to factor completely because eventually we're going to have, like, where is this going? Oh, let me go back to that last slide. Eventually, we're going to have, like, let's say, a fraction, right? And that's going to be in the numerator. And you're going to have something else in the denominator. If you don't have it factored out, you won't be able to cross cancel and simplify the fraction. Do you understand? That's where we're going with this. You need to factor completely so when we start adding, subtracting, multiplying fractions with all these things, you can cross cancel and you can simplify them. And that's the end of the video, Factor by Grouping 6-6.